Alrighty, what's going on everyone? Today begins another weekend adventure. Today, we're gonna dive right into doing a solid axle slash one ton axle swap on my brick nose Bronco right here. So, let's dive into all the parts we have and go over the process real quick. So, these are the axles that we're putting into the truck. They are Super Duty axles out of an 04 Super Duty. This uh, setup will work from any Super Duty from 99 to 04 because the o those generations have the front leaf springs. I picked these up out of two different trucks. Kind of a long story. I did film the process of picking these up, but it didn't fit anywhere in the other videos. So I scratched all that. And here we are. This is the setup, right? So this is a Dana 60 front, again, out of an 04 Super Duty. Uh, the gear ratio is a 373. And we also have a matching gear ratio in this axle, which is a Sterling 10 and a half. This also has an LSD, which is kind of a plus. So for this weekend, we're focusing on the front axle only. There's still a lot of stuff to go in the rear axle, and we'll dive into that when we get there. But let's go over all these boxes of parts that we have for the front axle conversion. All right, now let's start with the whole heart of this swap. This is a solid axle swap kit from Sky Off-Road Design. But yeah, so this kit uh, is set up for either the Super Duty axle out of the 02 to 04, or the F350 axle out of the OBS, like my truck out there. So axles from 90, F350 axles from 95 to 97 and Super Duty axles from 99 to 04. You have to pick and tell them what axle you're gonna go with, so buy axles before you buy the swap kit. And what it comes with is leaf hangers, I believe this is the rear side, and then uh, all your bushings and shackles and hardware. And then underneath, we have our other leaf cross member that's one piece for both that goes up front. This is a pretty simple, swap setup we still need to figure out shocks but we'll dive into that once we get there and then after that this solid axle sw swap kit is going to lift this thing about four inches or higher actually it's gonna be closer to five i believe with the super duty setup because of that we need to have a crossover steering so i bought me an, a build your own tie rod set this came with tie rod ends um these weld on bungs that slide into here that thread in the tie rod and then your lock nuts and then i went to weaver Weaver Fabrication. They were one of the only people that I've seen that make a machined hub for the Super Duty axle. So all this is, they machine the top of this hub and then they give you, and then they give you this newer steering arm that if I look at the packaging right, will sit right here. And then my new tie rod that I build will go here, will go right here to the Pitman arm. So for some better clarification, I have never done an axle swap. Um, but I do have a buddy who's done an axle swap. He has a, uh, a YJ Wrangler that he's put um, a Dana 60 front in and a Sterling 10 and a quarter on his. So he's done a lot of research. It was like a six year project for him, but he was also like 16 when he started it. But the, the point is he knows a lot about solid axles and just axle swaps in general. So he's gonna be coming over shortly and he's gonna definitely be helping me out with this. And now we're about to dive into the while you're in there phase of this project. On my current setup, um, I have these headers that are aftermarket. They're kind of like shorty long tubes. And if you look, you look down there, the collector for the headers, there's a giant hole in the center right there. I'm really hoping you guys can see that. But yeah, there's a giant hole in these headers. And I believe there's one on this side as well. So. I figured, well, there's no front axle under this thing. Let's swap it. So I hopped onto Summit Racing and I ordered me some headers. I believe they're the same style that's already in the truck. They're just the shorty, like long tube in a sense. And then I also bought an oil pan gasket because my oil pan is missing some bolts and it's leaking. So yeah, with all that being said, let's dive into this and pull the front axle out of this thing. Okay, all we gotta do left is get the torsion bars off, but the torsion bars are 
brackets are riveted on and it's going to be kind of a pain to take them off through the bushings so we're just going to cut the rivets punch them out of the frame and then the whole axle should drop so here we go Alright, so now that we got the axle out, I'm going to swap the oil pan gasket and swap out the headers. I'm not going to film this process because I'm worried it's going to be a very long and painful process and I don't want to bring the camera along for that. So, when you see me next, we will all have that done and we will slide the Super Duty axle underneath. 72 hours later. Okay, so, after about a week of work, no not really, but I finally got the headers swapped, we got the spark plug swapped. We got the oil changed, we got the oil pan bolts installed. All that's left to do is put the spark plug wires in as far as tune-up goes. Um, the boys over here are getting ready to at least attempt to slither the axle underneath. They already got the front shackle mount hooked up. I guess not shackle mount, but leaf mount. Yeah, spring hanger hooked up. So they're gonna slide it in, start mocking some stuff up, and uh, we'll keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a disclaimer saying this is very sketchy and do this at your own risk. So we're using the engine noise to pick up the entire front end of this thing, enough to get the axle underneath. And currently Dylan is centering this bracket up, tacking it. Once it's tacked into place, we're gonna take this axle out, get the truck back on the jack stands. He's gonna fully weld it up. After it's fully welded up, we have to add a measurement from there to there, add the back ones in, and then we can bolt this up. You want to go over how we uh, how we got the front mounted, and then what we did with the rear, kind of more in detail, as far as fabricator side goes. Yeah. So pretty much, we just uh, we found center of our wheel well here, and we centered up the axle, um, <clears throat> and we just used a straight edge, set it at the set it at the angle that the rig's at right now. Just kind of lined everything up. Um, and then we, we went ahead and moved it forward, probably about an inch or so. Just gave it a little bit of a wheelbase stretch up front. Um, I believe this kit, we, the only information we can find on this kit is seeing it installed on OBS Broncos, not Brick Nose Broncos. It seems OBS Broncos have like a crumple zone in the frame here, and they have a lot more frames sticking out. So that's why this looks a little bit goofy, um, sticking so far forward. We're gonna go ahead and uh, probably gusset this up front, but I'm not really too worried about that. Yeah. Um, after that, just to set the rear um, spirit, er, shackle hammer. Um, we went from uh, center eye to center eye. Um, the website from this kit gave us a measurement of 54 and a half inches. So we measured that back, and then I went ahead and burned that in. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna install the shackle, and this hides will be sitting on its own weight. Cool. Are we gonna are we gonna burn this in first? Or do you wanna get the other side measured up or how do you want what do you want to do next? Uh, probably get the other side. Um, get the other side to where we are at this point and then we can bolt everything in and set this thing on its own weight. Okay. I like that. Weld everything else in, so. Okay. We we fought with these for a while. Yeah, because these are uh if you look here <clears throat> you're uh Where's that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so they're, they're mirrored in a sense. So we put this one up first, and we're like, we're an inch and a half off. What, what are we going to do? And then we realize we grabbed the other bracket, and it's an inch and a half forward. So then it, wor it worked out perfectly for us. So, like, we didn't really – yeah, it worked out great once we got that in. Because we also have a body mount right here 
and that was our biggest struggle is trying to find a good placement in between the body mount and you just got to find the right the right shackle mount so i wish these were stamped or labeled you know right or left that would really help a lot but i guess it's kind of dependent on spring configurations and all that because if someone wanted to do an even bigger lift and got a you know a lifted leaf up front it'd probably be a little different i'm not sure all righty so we got the other side welded on, we got the leaves bolted up, and we actually got it sitting by itself. Um, so check this out. It's a, uh, you know, Carolina squatting right now, but we're doing we're doing great. It's looking really good. We still got to obviously do a couple other things. We got to do the uh, got to do the steering. Next weekend we're going to tackle that. But yeah, I got the other uh, got the other mount hold, hooked up, got the shackle in. Got this hooked up. We still need to come in here and finish welding this. I believe we're gonna gusset this a little bit, kind of beef it up. Uh, I'll figure out my bumper situation in a little bit, but it's sitting by itself. We also uh, jacked up the rear end and set it level. Um, I forgot to grab the camera when we did that, but I'll throw out a picture right here. And me and my buddy Cole have a bet as to if this thing is gonna be able to get out of the garage, it's a seven foot garage door. If it's gonna be able to leave the garage but when we're done with this and I think I'm gonna win that bet because I told him it won't get out of here. A few moments later. Okay, we're getting ready to swap over this hub to our crossover steer hub. Um, basically, kind of following the same process of knuckle. What? The knuckle, not the hub. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, we're, cro we're we're doing the crossover knuckle. So we need to uh, take off the brakes and then knock it off of the ball joints, and then we'll kind of continue the process off of there. But yeah, just just like taking off a knuckle. We're just gonna do those steps real quick. We've got the knuckle installed, new ball joints, axle shaft back in. Smith is uh, almost in. Well, no, the axle shaft oh. is in. We're putting the we're putting the unit bearing back on now. Um, but that all anti seized up. And it's not called a hub. It's a unit bearing. It is a hub, yeah. but it's a unit bearing. Um, so that's what we got going on on that side. Um, <laughs> we got. We got Marina helping now. She's I'm disassembling helping. this side. I'm genuinely helping. I'm helping. <laughs> so, yep, that's, she's doing that. Doing a great job, Marina. Thanks, yep. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. So, we'll get, we'll get this side done up. Then we can bolt our new uh, crossover steer arm. So, yeah, we're just in the process of reassembling. Once we get this knuckle off over here, I'm gonna press the, new, or the old ball joints out and the new ball joints in. And uh, yeah, I'm sure Smith will come back with an update after that. So after we finished up all the knuckle assembly, I went to my buddy's machine shop and we were able to drill a half inch hole on the steering arm. So now that we got this hole drilled out, we're gonna bolt her up. Probably put a little bit of Loctite on these, I don't know. And then we're gonna mock up our drag link, get her cut, get her welded, and get her mounted. Then we can steer, which was exciting. Right? Anything else? No, I think that's about it. All right, let's get to it. So Dilly's got this uh, really fancy, really expensive taper bit. As you can see, it's got a nice taper on it. And the purpose of that is to give us a nice taper for our tie rod ends to sit into. So, yeah, we're going to taper our steering arm and our pitman arm, and then we can kind of get some length mocked up and then Dilly's just gonna do uh, do Dilly things and get this built. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alrighty. Hope I don't mess up. Don't Wait. mess up, Dilly. Yeah, buddy. Zip that fucker on and zip that freaker on. <laughs> You're in there. Cool. Okay, before we go too deep, what I want to do is I want to get this uh, torsion bar off. No, track bar. And I want to get the other drag link off. Okay. Have fun. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> then also to cover in the basis in the future, I'm going to do some major cleanup to this axle. I can't remember if I covered this or not already, but I ordered a new tie rod so I can have a cool guy tie rod, and I will be getting a U-bolt flip kit to get rid of these buckets and just to also get rid of these. 
even though I can run these shock mounts, but I want a cleaner setup on this front axle. So we will cover that in the near future. The U-bolt flip kit will definitely be covered when we do the rear axle because I'm not ordering the U-bolt flip kit until we get rear axle components. Okay, so we got the track bar off. We got the steering stabilizer shock out and we also got the drag link out. Dilly went ahead and tapered my pitman arm and as you can see, we have the tie rods hooked up. Dilly measured the length. Now he's marking it out. And we're going to cut. And Quaid has failed to mention that he didn't buy new blades for his quarter band. So, <laughs> probably going to have to do this like the Andrew Yeah, we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way. I mean, we can use the saws. Oh, wait, we burnt all the saws off blades up at the fucking junkyard. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. He's an animal. Hey, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm gonna hop on Amazon and order a blade right now. <laughs> what are you doing, Dilly? Just greasing. Why? Um. Too supposed to. <laughs> you literally just explained to me why you put why you put the grease in it. So it doesn't get like spattered and stuff in the breads. It just helps keep everything nice and lubed up so that when we weld these when they get hot we can still thread in the things the tie rod ends and they just they just trust it. Alrighty, there we go. Just try to set up the tie the tripod for a nice time lapse and just got the whole side done. Mmm, bubbly grease. sorts of anti-seized. Want to get her threaded in and we're gonna mock her up. Look at this. This looks so good. It's gonna look even better once I get a solid tie rod and do the U-bolt flip kit and get rid of all this bulkiness. This is like the most complicated part of the front end or of axle swap in general if you ask me. Right Dilly? Maybe drive shafts a little complicated too? Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't say anything. Yeah, steering pattern's complicated. It's not really that complicated. Well, it says the guy who's been in fab for a few years. We about to steer this. Okay, go, go all the way. Go full lock each way. You're full locked there? Oh, and it stops on the other side. Okay, go the other way. Okay. Um, count how many turns you get from that lock to the other lock. It should be about four. Four. Goody. Yeah, you are pissing power steering fluid from somewhere, though. That's not good. We didn't do anything with that. Yeah, I know. Alrighty, if you made it this far to the video, that means you're actually really interested in a solid axle swap. I'm about 90% done with my Bronco right now. I'm really behind on editing. This kind of typically how it goes for me, especially when I'm like in the middle of a project. But um, I'm going to show you where my Bronco's at right now. We'll throw in a picture right here. After I made it this far, I realized there's a much better way on a bullnose or a bricknose Bronco to do a solid axle swap, especially in the front. Sky Off Road makes that solid axle swap kit that I bought, <clears throat> but they also sell a reverse shackle kit um, that's very common, very popular, probably one of the bit most popular, most best selling things that Sky Off Road makes, um, mainly for the OBS platform. But they do have one specifically designed for the bullnose and bricknose platform. It says on their website um, 85 to 91. But, yeah, I've seen it on the groups of someone using it. I'll throw in a picture of that guy's truck right here. 
And as you can see, it's a much cleaner setup with the way the frame sits on a uh, brick nose or a bull nose. Um, and I kind of wish I went that way, but it's I'm way too far past that. So that's just where we're at. I do I do want to let that in. Um, it's actually a cheaper kit. Just kind of wanted to show that, throw that in there, so you know you don't go the same way I did and have like a shelf <laughs> on the front of your frame. Either way, you'll get it done. The other thing is, I'm th pretty positive this kit is not nearly as tall as my kit, but I have Super Duty Springs. The picture I just showed of the other Bronco has OBS Springs. Super Duty Springs are about an inch and a half taller. So I don't really know. All I know is my kid is kind of more closer to a 7-inch. My friends say a 10. I'm going to keep arguing with them that it's not a 10. It's more like a 7. But, yeah, that's 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 where my kid is currently sitting with a Super Duty Spring. I think this Reverse Shackle kit will be a much more doable kit. And I think I might eventually go that route. With that being said, that is the end of part one on the solid axle swap for the Bronco. In part two, we finish up the front axle, we uh, clean it all up, we do the U-bolt flip kit, we add in the new beefier tie rod, clean up the whole front axle to get it nice and painted, and then we also uh, throw in the rear axle and get that thing sitting under its own uh, weight fully with Super Duty axles. So stay tuned, we got a lot of fun stuff coming, and I'm going to be uh, trying to push this out real quick. So see you guys in the next one. Peace.